good morning and happy new year. Uh, before you take a seat, uh, just take a moment and greet the people around you. Uh, wish one another a happy new year if, if you can mean it. This is great. I love, I love the sound of a joyful church. Um, this morning, um, Mary and I turned to our uh, two and a half year old daughter, Evie, and we, we said, Evie, guess where we're going this morning? And she said, where? I said, we're, we're going to church. And she, um, she looks at us and she goes, can I come too? <laughs> And, and this is the best part, is I said, well, absolutely. And then she said, is there gonna be another pageant? <laughs> she really, really had a great time. I hope all of you had a really great holiday. Um, those of you who are here uh, Christmas morning will have seen a nice little note on my door um, asking the cleaners not to enter into my office. Uh, because right after the pageant, Evie ran into my office and spilled her entire uh, meal all over my office floor. Uh, so that was our Christmas, and um, I hope you all had a, a much better, more relaxing, healthy, healthier Christmas. Anyway, so Happy New Year to all of you, um, and welcome this morning to our gathering as uh, West Vancouver United Church. If you're joining us by live stream, uh, welcome to you as well. Uh, my name is Reverend Simon Monsieur, and um, we're joined this morning by uh, Megan's great leadership, my wife Megan Monsieur. Um, Thanks for putting up with me and being here this morning. Um, also, Rosemary on uh, the organ and uh, Peter Alexander, thank you for being here this morning. Um, I don't know where the rest of your posse is, but... <laughs> um, if the church is new to you, a very warm welcome. And uh, if you want to find out more about who we are, what we stand for, how we live um, this whole following Jesus thing, um, a good place to start is at the welcome table, uh, which is located uh, just through these doors and to the right, and you can access that after the service, and you can also join us for coffee and tea. And um, if you're here uh, with children for the first time, please know that there is a nursery available at the back of the tech booth down the stairs. And um, if you're joining uh, Sunday Club for the very first time, uh, please just bring uh, a Sunday Club registration form filled out. Um, it's in your pews, and it's just for emergency contact information. Um, a few announcements. Um, there's a lot happening in the next few weeks, uh, but let's start with uh, these, these memorial uh, poinsettias. If you donated and um, contributed to purchasing uh, some of the poinsettias in memory of a loved one over the holidays, uh, you can pick one up after the service, and if not today, they, they will be in the office uh, for the rest of the week. And so please do uh, help yourself to one of them. Um, also, uh, the women's retreat is coming up. There's information in your bulletins. You can sign up at the welcome table. Um, it is with Rabbi Laura, who's been leading them for the last few years. And it's just a really great time uh, for women of the congregation to get together um, to get to know one another and to go deeper in their faith. And um, another such opportunity is the Alpha series coming up, and that is going to be on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. Um, I got an email last week from someone saying, wow, I'm kind of thinking about it, but usually Sunday evenings are, are, are hard, and I said, okay, here's, here's the thing. 5 p.m., dinner is included, you don't have to make dinner, which also means you don't have to take care of the dishes. 
Um, but beyond that, um, a lot of us are, in our own lives, are either looking to deepen our relationship with God or um, trying to figure out uh, who we are as a community. And so if you're looking to connect with other people or with God, um, Alpha is one of the best programs that really does both of those. Um, so I, I just I invite you to spend over the next few weeks some time reflecting and listening whether God might be nudging you to take that step um, if you're worried that you're too old or not old enough, um, please know that all are welcome. And um, you can register for that online, but I, I know that that's not always the easiest for people, so there's also a sign-up sheet um, on the welcome table. And um, last not, but not least, um, starting, well, this year, I guess, uh, this year we are going to be celebrating 100 years of ministry um, here at West Vancouver United Church, which is, I don't, whoo, thank you, Mary Lee. <laughs> like, that's, that's amazing. That's, 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 that's saying something. Like, a hundred years. I wasn't even born then. <laughs> um, so next week, uh, for the next four weeks, we'll be starting a, a sermon series that will, will start paving the way for some of the ways that we'll be celebrating this year, and all of it will culminate in November in uh, a, a big worship service that will mark, um, almost exactly to the day, a hundred years. Um, now, a lot of people have been asking me, like, what are we celebrating? A hundred years of what? Is it a hundred years of the building? And I don't know why, that's, that to me is not exciting. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why we'd celebrate a hundred years of a building, but um, it's a hundred years of, of West Vancouver United Church. And uh, so next week, um, I'm kicking off a sermon series with a sermon on celebration, and we'll be going a lot deeper into the what is it exactly that we are celebrating? Um, so, with that being said, I invite you to take a deep breath and settle in. And with, uh, with the gratitude um, of all that God has done and that God is doing and all that God will do, we light the Christ candle as a reminder of God's presence with us. Good morning. Would you join with me in the call to worship? The Lord be with you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Lift up your eyes and look around. Come, let us worship the God of light and joy and peace. And we're going to continue um, moving into the gathering pair where. Uh, we remember God's presence and a love and um, grace for us. So let us pray. God of promise and light, open our eyes this morning that we may see your light in the darkness. Open our hearts that we may perceive your promises of justice and righteousness fulfilled in the babe of Bethlehem. May we, like the Magi, have a star to guide us on our journey of Christ, to find the one who will truly set us free. May this time of worship bring us closer to you, that the good news of birth, of light, and love will transform our lives. Bring your light as we pray the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
teens and uh, kids who are here this morning up to, oh, there we go, um, up to the front so we can pray with you before you head off to Sunday Club. And while they, um, while they make their way up, um, who, who thinks they had the best Christmas? Yeah, okay, a few. That's great. What about, what, about, um, what about here? Who thinks they had the best Christmas? Oh, okay, okay. Take a hero, medium. medium. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, so b- before, you, uh, before you head off to Sunday Club, um, I just, I, I want to, uh, to pray for you, uh, particularly for the year ahead of you. And, um, and I would hope that in being here on Sunday mornings that you would feel uh, the love of a group of people who, um, who stand behind you and, and who will always, always have your back. Um, so let me pray for you and then you'll uh, head upstairs with uh, Dylan and Julie. So let's pray. Um, God, I, I, I just thank you for these amazing young people. And God, may you continue to guide them. And God, as a congregation, we pray for your blessing and your anointing on their year ahead of them. God, in the choices that they make and the people that they meet, may your spirit be so evident in their lives. And so as they head off to Sunday Club, may you go before them. And in everything, may you continue to teach us. And may we continue to learn. We ask all of this in Jesus' awesome and holy name. Amen. All right, have a great, uh, great time in Sunday Club. marks a new year. Uh, We thank you for this other trip around the sun. We thank you for the year that has passed, the people we met, the paths we walked, the events that changed us. God, we are mindful of the pains of this past year. God, where we felt lost. And God, we also acknowledge the times we celebrated and felt loved. God, we look to the year ahead. God, we look at the changes that are ahead of us, known and unknown. God, we look to the interactions we have yet to have. God, we look to the places we are going to go. And Father, we ask your hand on all of this. God, we ask for your presence. God, we ask for the knowledge of knowing how much you love us and are with us. God, in our church family, as we begin to celebrate our 100th year of ministry. God, breathe into this congregation. God, help us be a people that move, that are lights of who you are, who you truly are. God, help us to be open. God, help us to celebrate with young and old, new and not so new, God, may we listen, be attentive to the ways that you are calling us, calling us to uh, new areas, new ministries. God, may we have the hearts to hear what you're saying. God, 
in the, these times of not knowing what is true, God, we pray for truth and wisdom. We pray for the confidence to know what is right and stand for what is right. God, we pray for the heart to listen and learn from others that we don't know. God, we pray for grace. And God, we also lift up those that we know need you. God, those that we can name like Carol, Georgia, Michael, Sue, Jamie, Jill, Alistair, Terry, Phil, and Cheryl, and the Taylor family. And God, we also lift up those that we all don't know. God, you know them. Be with them. They need you, and God, we need you. Thank you for being with us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. may be seated. Uh, before we uh, take up the offering, just a few notes. Um, there's a f uh, two different ways you can give this morning. Um, first of all, as the offering plates uh, pass you by, you can, um, you can give uh, that way. If you would like a tax receipt, uh, just make sure you grab a, uh, there's an envelope in the pew in front of you, um, and that's just so we know where to send the tax receipt, because it asks for um, who you are. Um, the other way you can give is online at um, wvuc.bc.ca slash give. And um, 
Not that that's out of the way. Um, the reason why we give so uh, nearly 100% of the work and mission of, uh, of our church, of our community of faith, um, is dependent and reliant on, um, on, on our donations, on the money that we feel called to invest into uh, the work of West Van United here on the North Shore and beyond. Um, God invites us to give joyfully. I always struggle with parting with things that are important to me. And so as we take up the offering, um, I invite you to consider what God is calling you to part with. The offering will now be received.
to hear God's word, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your presence, open the mind of God to us, that in your light we may see light, and in your strength be strong. Amen. Today's reading is from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12, and it tells the story of the visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that had been seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
you, Peter. Thank you, Rosemary. Good morning again. Um, so I, I don't know if it's just me. Um, I'm just I'm feeling this morning um, that there's a there's a I don't know if it's a heaviness, um, but if you don't mind, I will just I'll just pray. All right. So if you join with me in praying. Um, God, we, we gather here this morning in your house, um, and I feel, um, I feel a heaviness, and I just ask, God, that your spirit would come and, and break through that. And God, create space in this room, in this sanctuary, for us to meet with you and to hear from you. And so God, come and be amongst us and speak. I ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you. Um, so this morning, uh, this sermon is about the ways in which we miss God. The sermon is about Herod. The sermon is about Cleopatra. The sermon is about you, and it's about me. And it's about 2019. So let's talk a little bit about Herod. Um, Herod is a fascinating... I spent all week reading up on Herod, and he is a fascinating figure in history. So Herod became military governor at the age of 25 years old. At the age of 25, he was made military governor in Galilee. And because, he, because of his natural abilities and, um, and just his, his, his ability to court the right people, by, the mid, by his mid-30s, he was made ruler over a quarter of the kingdom. Now, at one point, um, I won't go too, too far into it, but the Parthians invaded and he escaped to Rome. And the people in Rome said, if you conquer them, we will make you king. And so at a very young age, Herod is a phenomenally successful emperor and ruler. Now, as time goes by, um, he eventually marries 10 wives and has 15 kids. Now, amongst these 15 kids, there was no apparent, no clear apparent heir. And in the last few years of his life, um, he started to degenerate in paranoia. And this would have been probably around four years before the birth of Christ. And um, struggling to figure out an heir, um, he was continued courting people and continued uh, observing uh, what was happening. And he had his three eldest sons executed um, because they were vying too much for power. Um, earlier, I forgot to mention, he also had his wife, one of his wives, um, executed because she was part of the old royalty that he took over from, and because he didn't have royal blood, he decided to redo the entire kingdom in his image, and so he had his wife executed. So he had his wife executed, his three eldest sons, and... Um, which gives us a little bit of context as to the story about Jesus. Herod passed away between two and six years after the birth of Christ. And so this would have put him at the, at the, at the, at the summit of his paranoia around someone who was going to come and take his throne. And so in the passage that Christine read, we hear of a Herod who wants to find out who this king 
is to be and where this king is. But here's the thing. Herod hires people to go and meet Jesus. I don't know about you, but I find I sometimes have a tendency to try to delegate my faith to other people. It's easier for me to trust someone else's experience than it is for me to take that hard step to get there. And so this morning I want to talk about the ways in which we miss Jesus. And because Herod missed Jesus. Um, we're going to move now to, uh, this is not scientific in any way. Um, this is a personality quiz that I wrote this week for all of you. <laughs> and um, we're going to walk through this together. Now the way this is going to happen is there are five questions, and I call this personality quiz, um, which first century religious group are you most likely to relate to? All right, it's, I could make an acronym, but we'll leave it at that for now. So there's going to be five questions, and I will invite you, um, if you have a good memory, um, each question has three options, and to remember whether you would pick A, B, or C. And uh, we'll go through this with all five questions. Um, if you want, you can grab, there's a little pencil in your pew, and there's, um, maybe you can just jot down notes on your bulletin. But the goal is to try to remember which of the letter, which of these letters uh, surface most often. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. It's January 6th. We're just going to have fun with this. Like I said, it is not scientific in any way, but you'll see why we're doing this after. All right, so the first question, Kim. When you are faced with the unfamiliar, you tend to, A, look for signs of familiarity, B, be cautiously curious, or C, welcome the disruption. Now, I had a small little test group at home, and um, <laughs> once in a while, I'd hear, well, I, I wouldn't choose any of those. So here's the thing, is you, you have to choose one of these three, okay? <laughs> All right. Everyone good? A, B, or C. So question number two. Of the following, you find the most meaning in. Now, again, there may be other options, but of the following... You find the most meaning in A, the weekly ritual of faith, B, excellence and tradition, or C, the pursuit of justice. I'll give you a moment to think of that. The ritual of faith, excellence and tradition, the pursuit of justice. All right, question number three of five. Those who know you well might criticize you for A, being a little too by the book. I hear some giggles over there. Uh, B, struggling to see other perspectives. Or C, being a little over the top. We can all think of someone if it's not ourselves right now. <laughs> so being a little too by the book, B, struggling to see other perspectives, or C, being a little over the top. All right, question number four. Of the following, which most distinguishes you? A, your A-type desire to exceed expectations. B, your intellect or C, your relentless push for what you think is right. A, your A-type desire to exceed expectations. B, your intellect. Or C, your relentless push for what you think is right. Now I know many of you, and I would say many, many marvelous things about all of you, but which of these three 
would you choose? And finally, our last question. Success is A, leaving a legacy to younger generations. B, success is when all is as it should be. Or C, success is when you are free. Thanks, Kim. So I'll give you a chance um, to compile <laughs> your long list of results. Um, who, now, some of you may be in a position where uh, you had two, two votes for one color, or for one letter, two votes for the other, and uh, one vote for the other one, and that's fine. Um, did anyone have a majority of the letter A? Put your hand up, please. Okay, okay. And we're gonna use this later against you. <laughs> um, what about the letter B? Okay. And what about the letter C? All right, you're the fighters. All right, so now we're gonna go through. Now before Kim, uh, don't put the next slide up quite yet. Now, um, again, let me preempt this by saying this is non-scientific, non-binding, and I hope non-offensive as well, all right? <laughs> Um, because we're looking at three of the religious groups that missed Jesus entirely during Jesus' ministry when he was alive. And I am not saying that you are these people, simply that there are things we can learn from the ways that they missed Jesus and that we can incorporate into the year ahead, okay? So that's my big disclaimer. I don't want hate mail. Uh, <laughs> So let's look, those of you who had a majority of A's um, would probably relate most to the Pharisees. Um, now here's, let's, I know, <laughs> you're at Ali giggling. I'm so glad it wasn't me. Um, now here, let's start with the positive, okay? So the Pharisees were highly devoted people. There was no one who was more into their faith than Pharisees. The Pharisees took tithing so seriously that they didn't just give 10% of their salary, they gave 10% of everything. When it came to food, they even gave 10% of their spices to the temple. So these are people for whom faith was profoundly important. The Pharisees were also very passionate about making sure that their faith was passed on. The Pharisees were passionate about making sure that what they believed in did not die with them. So there's a good things about the Pharisees. So, you know, you can pat yourselves on the back, A's. Um, now here, um, the next slide. The Pharisees myth, missed Jesus with a faith that was so overly constrained by rules. The Pharisees didn't simply follow the rules in scripture, but they also followed the rules that were passed down from those who came before them. Which is why they had this giant body of rules that was suffocating. And they were so committed to that, that they missed Jesus. And so if this is you, here's my encouragement for you in 2019. Do something spontaneous. If you feel like you're stuck in the rigidity of your life, break out of that box and see where you might find God's spirit. Now, if you think A's have it hard, wait till we get to B's. <laughs> the Sadducees. Now, let's start about the Sadducees. Let's, let's look at the Sadducees. Um, the Sadducees loved the diversity in the community around them. Now, at that time, the Holy Land 
was increasingly influenced by Greek culture. Now, the Pharisees thought that was a terrible thing, but the Sadducees believed that there was something good, that they would be better in interacting with other cultures, that maybe there was something to be learned in people who were different from them. And unlike the Pharisees, the Sadducees lived faith with a lot less rules. They completely disagreed with the body of rules and laws that the Pharisees lived with. And they said, the only thing that matters is what's in Scripture. If it's not in Scripture, it doesn't really matter. And so they were able to live with what we would call grace. Now on the dark side... The Sadducees missed Jesus by finding purpose in their vocation. The Sadducees, their role was to oversee the temple. And so when Jesus came and said, it's not about the temple, when Jesus said and threatened and said, this temple in three days, or this temple, I will raise this temple to the ground and in three days build it back. The Sadducees got so angry, they tried to throw him off a cliff. And when the temple was eventually destroyed, the Sadducees disappeared with it because their identity was in the temple. And so if that's you, in 2019, here's my invitation. Pray. Spend time in silence. Spend time cultivating and nurturing spiritual practices that are not about who you are and your role. Pray. And finally, our third group, and this is my favorite. This is probably, this is, this is totally me. Um, the zealots. Uh, The zealots lived with passion. The zealots um, were against the occupying forces of Rome and did everything in their power, um, even up to armed conflict, to try to push back Rome and to reclaim the Holy Land. Now, of course, taken to the extreme, um, the zealots, there was a subgroup of the zealots who... Uh, would break into the homes of those who they didn't consider to be Jewish enough. And those people would never wake up. So I framed that as living with passion, okay? Uh, now, on the, if that wasn't dark enough, the dark side of them is they missed Jesus by being focused on their own agenda. This whole time they're trying to push back Rome and looking for a conqueror and not realizing and in the middle of their mission that Jesus was right there. And so in 2019, if this is you, I invite you to take time and to listen. And not just to listen, but to learn from people who are different from you. And that's the thing with the zealots is you were either on their team or you were not. And so in 2019, take time to listen and take time to learn from people who are different from you. So I want to, uh, to end this morning. Thank you, Kim, and thank you all um, for participating. Um, I want to end this morning... Um, by talking very briefly about the early church. One of the things, I've been writing a paper on the early church, and one of the things that keeps coming back over and over and over is that the early church lived their life and lived their faith in such a way that it made people in the community want what they had. Because the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God falls God's people. There is something that happens that makes heads turn. 
And I believe, as I pray for our congregation, I believe that in 2019 that God has something huge and good and holy for us. But my question is, will we miss it? Or will we take the time to pause? To get to know other perspectives? To pray? To be spontaneous? Because those are the traits of God. And so let me offer a blessing for all of you in a prayer as we head into 2019. I'll invite you, if you're comfortable, um, to place your hands open like this on your knees as a symbol of uh, receiving all that God has for you. But if you're not comfortable with that, that's okay as well. But let me pray. And God, as we head into a new year, I know and I feel deep down inside that you have something good for us. And God, I want to pray for each person here this morning. God, that they would know your closeness. And God, I want to pray for, uh, for those of us here who you might be calling to do Alpha this year as our way of stepping out. And God, may you put that nudge on the hearts of those who either need to deepen their faith or deepen their belonging to community. May you put that nudge on their hearts. And God, in 2019, you call us to break out of our box and to ground ourselves and prayerfully in you and to learn and to listen. And come, Holy Spirit. And we give you this year, we give you our year we give you our community. We give you our faith. We ask all of this in the powerful name of Christ. Amen.
friends and brothers and sisters, as you go out into this world, remember this one thing, that no matter who you are, no matter who you are not, no matter what you've done, no matter what you wished you had done, that God, the God who created this universe is madly in love with you. And I know that's difficult to hang on to, but may you know that deep down in the deepest of your being, that God is madly in love with you. And you carry that into your 2019. May you go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.